My name is Myra Dean. We live in Cheyenne, Wyoming, which is about 6,200 feet, so it makes breathing a little more difficult. I was diagnosed with pulmonary arterial hypertension in 2008. I still see the same doctor that diagnosed me at UC Health down in Denver. When I was diagnosed, I was told I had five years to live. We're kicking butt at nine years now, 10 years, maybe a little bit more. I just have a very strong connection to PH and the PH community through Facebook. It breaks my heart every time I look at the Facebook page and I see somebody else newly diagnosed because it's a scary, scary disease. It's become a routine in my life now. I still wish I didn't have it, but it's something that I have chosen not to let define me. In February of 2008, I just wasn't feeling good. I'd lay down and I'd try and sleep. Of course, at that point, I was laying just on one pillow and not, you know, thinking too much about it. But I just, I literally felt like I had bricks on my chest. So I'd end up sleeping in a recliner or a chair or, you know, something of that nature just so I could get some rest. So I started trying to investigate it. That was probably one of the most difficult periods of time during this whole disease because I saw cardiologists, I saw pulmonologists, I had doctors telling me that it was psychological, that there was nothing wrong with me physically. I believe every single doctor that I saw, if I remember correctly, told me that if I lost more weight, that I would feel better. I saw 19 doctors before I was diagnosed correctly. To be told that nothing is wrong with you or that it's psychological and you just need some help wrapping your mind around this. To be told that over and over and over again felt very defeating. I remember just sitting in my car after numerous doctor's appointments crying because I just felt like no one was listening to me and no one cared what I was telling them because they felt they knew better than I did. So that part was very frustrating. And I remember the last pulmonologist I saw, and at that point, I had no idea. I had never heard of pH other than pH levels when you're, you know, you're testing your, you know, water and stuff to make sure that it's the right level. And so I had never heard of that before and didn't really have an idea of what that was. I was about ready to give up and think, okay, this must be in my head. I have to figure out a way to get past this. And I went to a cardiologist. I thought, I'm going to try one more time. And he had my records. I had probably a three-inch file of records that he had in front of him. He spent not even probably 10 minutes examining me, automatically knew what was going on. And he said, you need to go to the hospital. And I said, okay. You know, I thought, well, that's encouraging. At least somebody's telling me something can happen. I said, okay, well, when do I need to do it? And he said, no, you don't understand. You leave this office and you go right to the hospital. When I heard that, it scared me to death, quite honestly, because I thought, oh my gosh, I spent all this time trying to find this doctor to tell me that there's actually something wrong with me. And now he's telling me I have to get to the hospital right now. So that was the most relieving And the scariest at the same time, just because I was so thankful to know that there was something physically wrong with me. I was just so glad that somebody finally recognized that there was an issue. So I was admitted to the hospital that day, and that's where it all started. He did a right heart cath. That was my first one. My pressures were 114. And I remember laying in the hospital bed because, of course, that was back when you had to be flat on your back and you couldn't move for six hours after a right heart cath. He was walking out of my room into the hallway. And I don't think he realized how close he was still to my room because he walked out and he said, I have never seen this before. Her pressures are 114. I have never seen anybody that is still alive after something like that. When I heard that, again, I was relieved to know what was going on. But then my thoughts all turned to, okay, now what? What do we do? And he's the one that recommended me um, and sent me immediately down to UC Health in Denver to see Dr. Todd Bull. And Dr. Bull was actually the one that gave me the very specific diagnosis. And it was so scary. I couldn't believe what he was telling me about and talking about and 
getting me on medications and this had to happen and I had to start diuretics and it was overwhelming and at times it still can be. But back then, boy, I was scared to death, literally, because, of course, you hear things like that and you start thinking, okay, well, let me look on the Internet. Let me see what's going on. And that makes it even worse. And so it was just a very scary time for me. I was put on Rivadio, which is a pretty familiar drug to everyone. I had to sleep with oxygen at night. But other than that, that's how we started treating it. I saw Dr. Bull probably, I don't know, once every three months. Every doctor's appointment required an echo beforehand to see where I was at. When I think back to those days and realized that I was only on one medication therapy and hoping and praying that all the time that it would work. And I think it did to an extent. It helped tone down, for lack of a better term, uh, some of the symptoms. And I at least felt like I was on the right track and I was going down the right path to where I could get this under control. But again, there was still that scary thought of, okay, there isn't a cure out there. And so regardless of what I go on, I'm going to have all of this forever, basically. It was difficult and easy at the same time because, like I said, I was only taking one drug, and that was in 2008. I was not getting better, but I felt like I was a little more stable. Probably one of the worst years I had was 2013. I started feeling worse. It was horrible. The shortness of breath was unimaginable. Just to be able to walk across the room and be short of breath from that and have to sit down, not to mention just being able to do other everyday tasks were becoming a lot more difficult for me. So in 2012, I was in and out of the hospital with getting fluid off and doing all of these things that are normally associated with helping to ease the pH, but I just kept getting more and more ill. I just felt like I couldn't do anything. It was hard to maneuver. It was hard to move. I certainly couldn't do anything like cleaning or cooking or anything of that nature. So I was admitted to the hospital in April of 2013. That's when Dr. Bull made the decision that I became the first patient he had that he had a pacemaker implanted. So that was first in April. And then I recovered a couple of weeks from that. That's when I was put on remodulin and got the line that goes into my system. That was scarier to me than being diagnosed, and I didn't think there'd be anything more scarier than that. When I knew that I had a line of medication going into my body that I had to be responsible for and be responsible for the changes every 48 hours and all of that, I was, oh my gosh, I I don't even know if I can describe how absolutely panicked I was because... I kept telling my husband, I didn't become a nurse for a reason because I don't like all of this stuff. I don't like to have to do things like this and to be responsible for a medication that's going into my body that is so strong and has so many side effects. I was terrified. Over the years, got used to the remodulin, as used to it as you can be, carrying around that pump and having to be literally tethered to something 24-7. About a year and a half ago, Dr. Bull put me on up summit as well. I'm on a trio of therapies now. The remodulin, I truly believe, saved my life. Things are looking a lot more positive now. I remember when Dr. Bull told me that I had to have this line put in. I remember him telling me that if I got down to a certain weight, that he would consider me for a lung transplant. The weight at that time that he gave me was so far out. I didn't even think about it because I knew that I didn't feel like that was something that I could achieve. I always knew that I needed to lose weight, but with all of this going on, it was just not something that I wanted to focus on, and I chose to not focus on it, and as a result, gained even more weight, quite a bit more weight than when I was diagnosed. Last February, so 2018, I was in a doctor's appointment with him and they gave me the regular spiel of, you know, you would feel better if you lost weight and so forth. And for some reason in that appointment, something clicked and I thought, I've got to do something about this because I've got children, I've got grandchildren that I want to be able to see for a long time. I need to take this part a little more seriously because I hadn't in the past. That afternoon when we were driving back from Denver, I told my husband and he had heard it before. 
He has never been one to push me into dieting or anything like that, but I knew in my heart that it was different. So I came home. I had gotten the approval from Dr. Bull to do light exercise. I found a used recumbent bike, and that very next day, I started using it. I could barely do anything on it. I mean, after five minutes at the lowest level of resistance, I was done after 10 minutes. But I kept on it every day and kept getting stronger and stronger and am still doing it now. I've upgraded to a better bike and I've lost almost 120 pounds. I really feel that that coupled with the therapies that I'm on is really making a difference. I feel healthier. The one thing I will say is I think in my head, I thought, well, maybe, you know, it'll make my symptoms better and I'll get better and I'll feel better. And I'm still am short of breath and I still have those symptoms and I still have the side effects from the medications. And I think those are things that I know I'm going to have to continue to live with, but I feel a little bit more capable of handling this whole situation now that I have gotten this much weight off. So it really has made a difference. And I know that I've read about people that have lost the weight and it made a difference. And I thought, well, you know, I don't know. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. And I can honestly say that it has. I'm Myra Dean and I'm aware that I'm rare.